here, one of the pastors at North Park Church in Columbus, Nebraska. Uh, currently not in Columbus, Nebraska, currently coming to you uh, from the great state of Kansas, visiting my mom and my stepdad this Memorial Day. Very grateful to be doing that. That's why you get to see all of these wonderful, these beautiful quilts in the background. Um, those are, are creations of my mother, the professional quilter. So, so you get to look at those instead of just my face this morning. So that's a, that, that, that should be uplifting, a positive thing. <laughs> so we're, we're in our Kingdom series still. You guys know that. Uh, week 106 of our kingdom series and that is our study straight through the gospel of matthew looking at the the kingdom of god from that gospel and we're we're continuing to talk about why god's will is always gracious right and we have um we know that it is god who works in us and to 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 act and to will according. It is God who works in you to will and to act according to his good pleasure. It's God who's doing the work in us. At the same time, there are attitudes that we can have that uh, certainly are conducive to receiving revelation. And, and we talked about coming to him as a child, coming to him acknowledging his grace, uh, coming to him through Jesus. And then we've been focused on coming to him on his terms. And, and remember, we've discussed who should come to Jesus, all of those who labor, those who are uh, under the law, and those who are heavy laden, those who realize as a result of the law that they need a savior, cannot save themselves, cannot adhere to the law. And then what is required of those who come to him? Uh, we, we've talked about taking his yoke. Remember, we see that in our key verses from Matthew 11, verses 28 through 30. We learn from him. We rest in him. We talked about what is promised to those who come. And, and last week, remember, we discussed a rest that is satisfying. That's what is promised. So this week, we're talking about the fact that Jesus' yoke is easy. Remember, there's in our key verses. I'll go ahead and read these key verses right now. We'll get back to this. This is Matthew 11, verses 28 through 30. And Jesus says, Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. You see right there, the yoke is easy. And... As Pastor Lynn pointed out in the message on Sunday, it's easy to overlook that bridge word for at the beginning of verse 30. Uh, but we're talking about, last week talked about finding a rest that is satisfying, actually commanded to, to rest in Christ. And, and we can do that for, because Jesus' yoke is easy and his burden is light. So on that note then, question one. What stood out to you most from the message on Sunday and why? Just just think back to what you learned from Pastor Lynn's message on Sunday and what what did you, you walk away from that message really thinking about? What did God really impress upon you? What stood out the most and why? Go ahead and pray about that and talk about that now. Okay, hopefully that kind of kind of got the thinking going, uh, kind of stirred things up a bit, got you in a good position, primed to go a little bit deeper. So, so let's do that. Let's move on to question two. Uh, the question is this, how has the yoke of works cost you? And, and remember, when we were discussing a rest that is satisfying, Pastor Lynn talked about the temptation that we all have to know what needs to be done and then create a law in our lives in order to accomplish it, which is something that, that we do not want to do. That is the yoke of works. If we think that we can be saved through our own works, then Christ's work on the cross is of no value, right? So we, we work because of Christ working in us. And how has that yoke of works, trying to be saved through your own ability and works, cost you? And how have attempts at freedom without God enslaved you? And maybe those attempts at freedom are works. Maybe those attempts at freedom are, are escape. And, and on the, the, 
the topic of escape, what is your man-made escape? Is it sin? How might you be tempted to call sin wisdom? So all of this, in a nutshell, this question is about how we are trying to save ourselves and being yoked to the, the yoke of works or the yoke of man-made escape as opposed to being yoked to Christ and free because of his work in us. So, so the question is this, several parts, but how has that yoke of works cost you? And how have attempts at freedom without God enslaved you? What is your man-made escape? What are you running to? What are you thinking about getting to in order to rest that is not of God? Is it sin? And how might you be tempted to call sin wisdom? If it is sin, how might you be tempted to justify it and actually call it wisdom in order to keep it? Go ahead and pray about that and talk about that now. Okay, so, so for question three, remember Jesus tells us that his yoke is easy. His yoke is easy. And, and, and we know what it's like to yoke ourselves to the wrong thing, right? And try to save ourselves or escape without God. That, that is a, a heavy, heavy yoke. But Christ's yoke is easy. And in the message, Pastor Lynn talked about freedom through Christ taking place in three facets. Or, or, or excuse me, excuse me. Pastor Lynn talked about what makes the, the yoke of Christ easy. And he talked about, number one, three aspects of what makes the yoke of Christ easy. One was that he has turned your affections away from sin to Jesus, where the flesh used to scream out, the soul needs rest, right? And the flesh screams for some sort of sinful escape to get it. The yoke of Christ turns our affections from those things to Jesus. Number two, what makes the yoke of Christ easy? That Jesus has finished all of the required works. We, we cannot save ourselves through adhering to the law. It's not possible, but Christ finished that. And instead of required works, we have desired works. Remember, Pastor Lynn talked about that, and Jesus says, all those who love me will do what I say. We don't do it for the love or for, or for salvation. We do it because we're so grateful for having been saved, so grateful for the relationship with Jesus that we, we want to, because Jesus has finished all the required works. And then the third uh, way that the yoke of Christ is easy is that he leads and we follow. We don't figure it out. We follow Jesus. So, on that note, for question three, in that message we discussed those three ways. How have you experienced those three ways in your life? How, how have you experienced your affections turning from sin to Jesus? How have you experienced an unyoking of works because Christ has finished all of the required works? How have you experienced freedom in that? How have you experienced freedom as a result of following Christ because he's leading? How have you experienced those in your life? And then which of those is the biggest struggle for you and why? Go ahead and pray about that and talk about that now. Okay, for, for question four, you know, a, a quick story. I was talking with an old friend of mine recently and explaining to him that we are all yoked to something. We are a slave to something. Either essentially we're a slave to sin, we're a slave to, slave to our flesh, or we are a slave to Christ. And remember, Jesus tells us in our key verses that you will find rest for your souls, which is what the soul is screaming out for. We're always, always trying to get peace in our souls, and we go about it the wrong way, right? Without Christ, we have no choice but to do that. And I was explaining to my friend that you're going to be yoked to something. You're going to be a slave to something. Jesus says the same thing. You're, you're going to be a slave to something, but 
if you are yoked to Christ, yes, you'll be obligated and you will be his bondservant, you'll be his slave. Uh, but you will find rest for your souls. Now, at mentioning slavery to Christ to my friend, he was just absolutely appalled, absolutely offended. Could not fathom that, even hear the phrase slave to Christ. Now, when I hear it, I'm overjoyed and comforted and have peace at the knowledge that, that I get to be a slave to Christ. The, the question is this, you know, my friend, he wanted to keep friendship with the world. That was why he was so offended. He couldn't bear the things that, that Christ would require of him. As far as we as Christians are concerned, how is friendship with the world hurting us? Specifically, how is friendship or a desired friendship with the world hurting you? And do you struggle with being a slave to Christ? Do you struggle with that phrase? Or is there peace and encouragement that comes from that, that phrase? How is friendship with the world hurting you? And on that note then, do you struggle with being a slave to Christ? If so, how? Go ahead and pray about that and talk about that now. Now remember, we talked a couple minutes ago, and, and uh, uh, Pastor Lynn, it was, it was just a really neat phrase, and it really stood out to me when I was watching the message, that we, we don't have required works, we have desired works. And those desired works actually cause rest in our lives. Well, how does that work? Talk about that. How do desired works cause rest in your life? Biblically, how does that work? And then how have you seen that work in your life personally, specifically? Desired works, not required, desired, out of a love, a gratitude for the work that Christ has done in your life and for the work that he did on the cross in general for, for all that, that might give their lives to him. How do that causing a desire for works, how does that desire, how do those desired works cause rest in your life? Pray about that and talk about that now. Okay, and for question six, uh, you know, another phrase that Pastor Lynn used in the message on Sunday that really stood out was that his, Christ's own power rests on us so that we can rest from our own power. Th that, it's just a, that's a, a wonderful, wonderful promise that we can obtain that, that we can apply that. So here's your, your takeaway, your walk away. What does that mean? His power rests on us so that we can rest from our own power. What does that mean? And what would God have you do in your life right now, today, to either obtain that, maybe for the first time ever, or to apply it, to better understand it, to better apply it in your life? That's it for this week, guys. Uh, as always, I'm very grateful to have been able to, to be here with you. Really, as terrible as technology can be at times, sometimes it's wonderful, right? That, that it's, I'm still able, even though I was unable to be in church. As you guys know, I, I was uh, preaching in Fremont. Really, really grateful to have been able to do that. Really uh, praying that Pastor Cody's having a, a great time with family in the couple weeks that he gets to be gone. And at the same time, I can still be here with you. And that is a wonderful blessing. Uh, if you guys need anything, you know how to reach me. Again, I would encourage you to check out the website, www.insidenp.com, because everything is easily accessible from that one location. That's it for this week, guys. Uh, very, very grateful again to have been here. And Lord willing, I'll be back with you next week.